Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's um, Data Color webinar in cooperation with Canon. Um, it's perfecting your image editing suit with Richard West, and from Canon, we have our guest presenter, Josh Singer, with us. Hello, Josh. Hello, Richard. How are you doing? Hello, Boris. Good, thanks. Josh, you good? Good evening, Boris. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Okay. okay. Um, please allow me to um, tell everybody what we do tonight. We have a nice presentation to come from Josh and from Richard. We will record this, and after this session, uh, we will go into the question and answer section where you can enter all the questions you have. As I mentioned, we will record this webinar, and uh, it's time for me to hand over to uh, Rich, I'm, you're going to start tonight, right? Yeah, that's right, Boris. Yes, okay. so let's, uh, well, let's kick the evening off. Now to Speak be the moderator now. Lovely. Thank you. Cool. Right. Well, good evening, folks, and uh, let's um, have a quick uh, sort of uh, hello from me and a hello to Josh. Uh, Josh, you're going to be hearing from uh, in about I don't know five or ten minutes. I'm just going to do a, a quick sort of uh, start off of the process because we, we're talking about how to set up your, your perfect editing suite this evening. Really fundamental to that is is essentially printing an output. You know, this, this is something that uh, we, we want to be uh, focused on tonight as far as starting from the end of the process if you like, i.e. where you may today or you may want to get your images to basically as far as output is concerned. Now a lot of people don't necessarily print at the moment but hopefully after you've seen this evening it gives you it'll give you a lot more confidence and also a lot of reasons why you need to be getting into printing your images because uh, it's, uh, it's part of the art form as it were and also part of the, the income stream that there is out there for you. Key thing about this of course from a data colors perspective and from Canon's perspective is we need to get your colors correct, we need to get them right, we need to put you into that nice little situation where the acronym is WYSIWYG but what you see is what you get basically. We want you to be able to trust that when you're capturing an image the colors you see are the colors that you get into your machines that you can then retouch and then when you eventually go to output and that output could be other things like the the internet of course and, and, but you know preferably if you get the the images optimized and ready for printing then you can absolutely add to the impact from the, the different types of stock, the different types of medium you can be using and obviously having a, a, a quality printer is, is a key element as part of that workflow. So this is the, the ideal world, this is where we want you to be getting to after this evening, we want you to be able to capture images, be able to retouch those either on your computer or perhaps with a, a, a tablet plugged in like a Cintiq and then get them out to output. That's the ideal world where everything looks exactly the same all the way through right from the word go. So of course ideal worlds are ideal. Things get in the way. Things like for instance most notably print or print paper, print stock, print inks, different types of printers. You know, and Not very good printer obviously is not going to make your images look very good, whereas a great printer will really enhance that end result. But in particular, things like stock can make a big difference to the way your images look and, and the impact that they have. And when I say stock, we're talking about paper, we're talking about different types of media. If we think perhaps just about how we, uh, you know, perhaps are used to seeing images in newsprint where notoriously the newsprint is not very high quality and therefore you look at your image and actually you've already expected not to look very good but you know that if you saw that same image perhaps in a magazine or as a printout then it would look considerably better. Well a large proportion of that, that difference there is down to the actual paper because notoriously newspaper stock is referred to as blotting paper or you know it's not very very good quality basically and so therefore that has a big impact it, it actually absorbs a lot of ink it spreads so therefore that makes your images look much more dark and closed in than they would do otherwise so basically having good quality print good quality types of stock can, uh, can be used creatively and that's where you can absolutely get 
impact depending on the type of image. You know, if you want to put down perhaps black and white work that can go into uh, you know, a gloss stock and make that look much more uh, contrasty, or perhaps it could uh, be used to um, you know, put onto a sort of a parchment or a matte stock to give it much more of an artistic effect. And you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of, of nuances and improvements you can make with the different types of paper. And of course, how you lay ink down on that, i.e. the printer, is a key important part to that. But what we need you to be able to do from a getting your colors right perspective is to understand, OK, these different environments are going to have different effects. So therefore, what we've got is a couple of extra stages we'd like to suggest that you add into your workflows. Now, we can do this at different points in the workflow, but the key thing we want you to be able to do compared to that first diagram I showed you before. Here we've got basically uh, the same screen at the bottom there on the, 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 uh, the soft preview adjust stage, but that's the same screen over a period of time. So therefore, what we're saying is, okay, let's, let's actually add in an extra couple of stages there. Because if, let's say, we, we're printing out on a printer and it comes out looking you know, maybe it's on a parchment stock or a, a luster stock or whatever that, that stock may be, whatever that type of paper may be, and it's giving it an effect, we need to get ahead of the game and see what that effect is going to be so we can soft proof that earlier on in our workflow. Because that means that we can get ahead, see what the effect is going to be, and either choose to leave it in or adjust the image on screen to make sure that we actually take it out and get that image printed out or output as accurately to how we want it to be as possible. So adding in soft proofing, then adjusting or correcting, depending on whether you need to or not, whether you want to, or whether you're just happy with the way it's going to look, that's, a, that's the extra stages we need to get to. <clears throat> now we're going to cover off how to do the soft proofing very shortly. Quickly, just a, there's, there's a few different ways in which we can actually create this, this soft proofing environment. Uh, one of those things could be using uh, one of the data color products called a spider print. Now that's a device that actually reads color charts printed out from your printers on your type of paper and going out, therefore you're, you're testing those papers basically. Now we're going to look at the, the rest of this workflow to, to improve your, your editing suite here. We're going to move back to that, uh, even to the capture stage later on in the presentation. But for the time being, let's focus on this soft proofing because it's something that is highly important. Now I'm going to quickly pop out of Lightroom and we're going to pop into, oh, sorry, out of, uh, out of um, uh, the, the presentation and we're going to quickly pop into the Lightroom here just so that I can bring your attention to what I think is possibly one of the easiest means of soft proofing upstream. Now Josh is going to show you perhaps a, a, a means of soft proofing downstream, i.e. at the print end of things, which is really the, the critical stage, the, the, the final check stage to make sure things are coming out the way you want them to. But at soft proofing at the retouching end, when I want to be retouching on my images, is also very vital. So I've got an image here we've been working on uh, at a photo shoot recently and basically we've got uh, a uh, young lady here, um, model I don't know, Tallulah, uh, Tallulah Blue, and uh, she's um, taking the photo and we want to see how this is going to look on different types of paper on, on our different printers. And we can do that in the develop module of Lightroom by just hitting the soft proofing button. Now hopefully you can see a subtle change there wherever you're, you're viewing from across the internet. At the moment what I'm doing is I'm applying a um, a, a soft proof for a, a, a 5100 printer from Canon. Now I can show different types of stock, and that's on a satin stock for instance, show different types of stock and the effects that they're having on there. But if I hit the Y key in Lightroom I can see the before and after, so I get a real view of before and after that being applied. Now it may be a bit subtle for you at home, so I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna show you a, a not very good printer, um, and uh, no, no slight on the, the, the printer here, it's just my own photocopy of fax machine that I ubiquitously break out in order to show people bad quality print, just so that they can see it across the internet. 
and uh, effectively you can see straight away here a much more washed out image on the right hand side compared to before there was very subtle differences between the, uh, the, the you know the, the great prints we were getting off the, the Canon there on both the luster and the satin stock here obviously we're getting a, a far more washed out result kind of like newsprint actually in fact we can also emulate newsprint on here as well so you can see uh, newsprint from the from the US standpoint there but we'll pop it back onto that uh, that Kodak uh, uh, photocopier type machine there, not very good that has to be said so therefore part of the, the, the thing we're, we're going to do in Lightroom is obviously make that adjustment stage here because we don't want to see our image looking like that. Now unfortunately I'm fully aware that no matter how much adjustment I do on this image actually much as it's going to create a proof copy for me which is great so therefore I'm not adjusting the original image I'm now creating a, a duplicate. It doesn't matter what an amount of contrast and so on I, I pop into this image I'm never going to get it looking exactly like it does on the left hand side just purely because it's not a very good um, color printer basically you know this is something that could put you off printing if you were using some a device like this why it's vitally important to get a much better printer like the, the the Canon range that we're going to be looking at this evening but when we've got that adjustment set up however good we can get it to be we just need to go into the develop module in Lightroom and save that as a new preset and we can give that a, a name or a, a whatever title we want to give it and create that and that's obviously replacing what I've done before but we've now got a, a preset over in our presets folders here down here which gives us the opportunity to actually correct our, our paper stock and, uh, and you know, a, a soft proof and correct for that uh, that uh, effect of paper and stock on there basically obviously in this case to be perfectly honest I wouldn't be using this printer I'd be using something far better like the range that uh, Josh is going to run through but there we are hopefully that's giving you an idea of how to soft proof in Lightroom now you can do the similar sort of thing in Photoshop for instance I think Josh is going to be showing you some methods of doing that um, key thing about soft proofing in Lightroom is if you are making adjustments early on in the editing stage then joys of Lightroom mean you can actually then just choose a whole bunch of images and of course apply that adjustment to all those images to correct all of those images so it's a very quick way of getting things ready for output but uh, enough of the the demonstration in uh, in Lightroom let's just quickly pop back in because what we're doing here is very important we're emulating our, our printers and our stock and our inks because all of these things are taking a, 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 having an effect in here and we're doing it in this instance I've been doing it using the the spider print now this is a device as, as mentioned just aimed at uh, printing out color swatches that comes with a software basically Mac or PC you print those out and you can read those color swatches and that builds up what's called a profile now a profile is a little file sort of one or two megabytes in size that you can easily uh, share with people if you needed to or you can basically get from other people as well if, if necessary but in this instance we're creating our own bespoke ones using the spider print which is of course the most accurate way of creating that sort of profile to, to soft proof with and in Lightroom I'll just pop out of there just in, just for a second again in Lightroom basically you're, you're creating that uh, soft proof and you're actually seeing the, the different types of um, uh, profile appearing just by they automatically pop into your Lightroom folder in that uh, that create proof copy area as soon as you hit soft proofing so hopefully that's given you a bit of an understanding of how to create a profile of course the the joys are you know, well you don't necessarily need to be creating your own profiles nowadays because lots of paper manufacturers already produce profiles for you key thing is to make sure you are keeping yourself up to date though because of course paper stocks etc etc will change and potentially you know temperatures will make a difference as far as the way inks are laid down as well but what you do have to do is get a profile for every type of paper ink and stock that you've got so any combination that you're going to use whether it's you or perhaps whether it's somebody else because you can get generic profiles this is produced by uh, one of uh, our partners we'll be talking about tonight as well so um, so basically you can download uh, profiles from uh, for free from from lots of different paper manufacturers they're generic profiles so they're not necessarily going to be as accurate as your particular printer ink and stock but at least it will give you a step along the way if it's not so important to you but that's giving you a bit of a background now I'm going to see if Josh is ready to, uh, to take over the uh, the running of the session now and um, 
Uh, are you there, Josh? I am, and uh, hopefully ready, as long as all the technology is, is, is good to me this evening. Good man. Well, we'll, we'll see whether I can uh, swap you over. Or is, you know, I think Boris might be even swapping over as we speak. So Already done. Already a good grief, he's so, so organised, there you are. So, so oh, yeah, and we can now see your screen, Josh, so um, all good. So over to you, mate. Tell us all about what's going on with the world of Canon and printing and, uh, you know, how can we get, how can the guys and girls out there and, and myself as well get more out of our printers? Okay, well, um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining this evening and taking time out of their evenings. Uh, my name's Josh Singer and I work in the wide format group for Canon UK. Um, something uh, that we're quite passionate about um, really is talking to photographers and people in the creative world um, and, uh, and just discussing the, the value of print um, because I think uh, as, uh, as the digital age has kind of come upon us, um, print has been a little bit left by the wayside so people view a lot of their images and, and a lot of the time these are absolutely fantastic images taken with a lot of skill and creativity um, but they're only looked at on you know small uh, screens or, or possibly at best projected and that doesn't really do any of this print justice so uh, one of our kind of missions if you like is to talk to as many photographers as we can and, and explain the, the value and the power um, of print um, and try and get rid of a little bit of the, uh, the mystery and the myth around uh, printing. Um, our large format printers are, are really just scaled up versions of what you would have on your desk um, at home uh, and as I have on my desk at home um, and they're not uh, designed to be complicated um, so some of the bits in this presentation are just about how to make it as easy as possible um, for you to get the best results um, and certainly echoing uh, Richard's comments so far, um, it, it all starts with uh, calibration tools and knowing what you see on screen is what you're going to print um, and the key is to not make costly mistakes by doing a little bit of uh, time preparation. Um, so I'd normally uh, show some videos but uh, because of internet connections and various other things I'm just going to run through a couple of quotes um, that I think are, are quite powerful. Um, the first one uh, from Jeff Ascoff, who's a certified Canon Explorer, we do, do a bit of work with. And he says, uh, he talks about producing additional revenue streams for his business. So if any of you out there are photographers that, that sell your work at the moment or would like to, um, something that uh, is quite apparent is that um, to add more revenue streams and profitability to your uh, business, whether it be kind of uh, something that you do on the side in addition to your nine to five, or if it's you know your business and, and that's what you do, printing has a real key part to play in driving revenue and absolutely driving profitability. Um, Jeff's comments here, which I uh, I like, are the fact that it's the input and the output that match. So because he's buying and using Canon equipment from start to finish, he has trust in the quality that he produces and knows that that's going to be top notch for his customers. Uh, moving on to Clive, another one of our Canon explorers, he also looks at um, uh, print as a way to increase uh, the revenue and profit that he can make running uh, a photographic business. Um, so rather than outsourcing his print work to uh, a, a print production house where he doesn't have so much control over the quality and the output and the colour. Um, he closes the loop himself by doing his print in-house on a, uh, a 24 inch and A1 Canon uh, image program printer. And again, he, he looks at this as a, you know, uh, having placed trust in the Canon brand and being very happy with the quality he has on the camera side of things um, to close that loop by doing the same on print. Um, and again, looking at Ori Media, who are a, a group that we deal with uh, in the US, uh, who actually capture uh, a lot of 4K video and take stills out of that to give to their customer. Um, they uh, also use uh, a 44 inch machine, a 12 color 44 inch machine, as a way of building customer loyalty by being able to give them prints during photo shoots. So lots of real positives there that you can get from print. and. Um, and I think, uh, in certain respects, printmaking is almost a, uh, a lost art form. Um, it is the end result of photographic capture and, and uh, 
as I said uh, to start with, we're very keen to to bring that back to the photographic world and and uh, get people to uh, be reinvigorated by tangible print because it's um it's as you all know, having something in your hand is so different to uh, to seeing an image on screen. So that's what we'll uh, we'll go on to in a little bit. Um, but one thing that uh, there's a, a, again a little bit of mystery around is uh, is just who we are at Canon and uh, what we do. So I thought I'd uh, incorporate this slide because there may be a few things that you aren't aware that we produce. Um, Canon, uh, as a company, are, are purely about imaging, um, imaging input or imaging output. So some of these things you may have seen before, um, Canon lenses presumably and, and Canon SLR cameras. You may have not ever seen a Canon projector or Canon binoculars, for instance, but again, it's imaging. Uh, we're also uh, uh, fairly big when it comes to uh, scanning, so input of imagery. Um, and uh, down in the, uh, the bottom right there, you'll see that we're actually uh, uh, moving into the 3D printing market as well, and there's some exciting developments coming there. And with our understanding of uh, inkjet printing and our understanding of scanning, we should be in a very good position to uh, move into 3D print, which uh, is uh, yeah an exciting time ahead. So that's a little bit about us and uh, the, the key point there on the headline, we don't just make great cameras. Um, so this is, uh, is leading into what we do on, on wide format. And uh, wide format itself, we have uh, a fair range of printers, uh, not just in, in segments that I think you guys will be interested in, uh, photographic, um, but also for point of sale and poster production for um, uh, bureaus that, uh, that print banners and posters, but also things like CAD and technical wide format printers. Um, and we've been uh, producing machines like this uh, since the early 2000s, and that's drawn on the Canon heritage of bubble jet, which some of you may have heard of before, which is just a, uh, uh, a variation effectively of inkjet technology where a bubble of ink is created using a very small amount of heat in a print nozzle. So we have a, a, an award-winning lineup of products, um, but often uh, people don't think about us for print, they think about us for cameras, and that's the kind of uh, cycle that uh, it's one of my personal missions to, to, try and, uh, to try and break. So uh, hopefully we can get a little bit further with that during this presentation. So if we look at the um, uh, range that I think is probably most appropriate to, uh, to the audience we have in tonight, um, that would be our flagship range, our photo and fine art 12 color products. Um, so we have machines from 17 inch, which is uh, A2 plus. Uh, we have A1 plus 24 inch, uh, 44 inch, which is effectively a, a B0 type size, uh, and 60 inch, which is our, uh, our largest wide format inkjet product, which is a B0 plus plus. And these really are aimed at uh, everybody from uh, someone that's enthusiastic about print and wants to get involved in producing their own images in uh, you know, a quality that they've never imagined before in their own homes or offices, all the way up to uh, gallery standard production uh, where um, someone would be producing work to go in, uh, in art galleries. Uh, you'll find these in uh, photographic departments in universities um, uh, and so on and so forth. And we have a, quite a unique offering here uh, with our 12 color system where we're getting a very, very wide color range and very accurate results, which I'll move on to uh, in a little bit. What's really important is um, that you don't just trust me because I work for Canon but you can put your trust and your faith in uh, independent recognition from uh, people like Byers Labs International, who I've got some, um, some awards on screen here for now, including uh, last year we won Graphic Arts Printer Line of the Year. And these are guys that will test the printers to virtual destruction. Um, they will weigh ink cartridges before and after a print is produced, um, just to find out if the printer's really telling the truth about how much ink it used. Um, we also have awards from people like TIPA, um, who you may be uh, familiar with, the International Photographic Association, um, who recognize our, our printing products as being some of the best in class. So 
bottom line here is uh, don't just take my word for it. By all means, go out and do some research and, and really have a look at what we have to offer. Um, I think we have to work quite hard to uh, to buck the trend sometimes, but I think that Canon are, uh, um, are passionate really about the input and capture to output story and have been working very, very hard over the past kind of decade or so to uh, produce absolutely the, uh, the best quality machines on the market. But as I said, have a look at some research and uh, we can always uh, pick up any questions you may have on the end um, and with our, our reseller partners um, who will uh, have some information and have all these uh, uh, documents to hand if you'd like to see them. So moving on to uh, print heads, um, uh, Richard and I had a, an amusing conversation earlier about it being the thing that everybody talks about, but apparently his family don't round the dinner table. Um, I get questions. About, <laughs> I get questions about print heads all the time. Um, uh, it's probably something that I end up talking about more than more than anything else. And and the reason for that is they really are the absolute heart of any printer. Um, any inkjet printer will have a, a print head inside it. Um, and that is the bit that gets your ink onto the paper and delivers the quality and the results that you need, along with various other things inside the machine, of course. Um, we're very, very uh, keen on uh, showing our customers that actually um, we operate a very fair uh, print head warranty for starters. So all of our print heads, which are user, re user replaceable, um, they're not designed to be short-term consumables, which we have to buy very often and they're not affixed into the machine uh, part where you'd need an engineer to replace it. It's something that you could replace at home in your wide format printer or in your office uh, and the whole process is perhaps 20 or 30 minutes. But they have a 12 month rolling warranty so if anything ever goes wrong with your print head, Canon will warrant that within the first 12 months. If anything goes wrong with that print head, Canon will warrant that in the UK for the next 12 months. So it's a very customer friendly policy. Excuse me for a second there. <coughs> um, so you're the... You're being choked up about the deal you're going to offer them later, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Let me um, just take a sip of water and I'll be back with you in just a second. In indeed. Just just so you're aware, folks, um, we've got some special promotions tonight. Now, I have to say, not wishing to steal Josh's thunder, but the one he's got lined up on the printers here, whereas I used to think uh, the, the printers are the sort of size that he's, he's talking about this evening were, you know, mortgaged the house in order to, to start uh, looking at buying them. We're now talking about something that is very, very affordable. So therefore, if you are thinking about going into any sort of uh, bigger form of printing, really worthwhile sticking around to, uh, to find out uh, the, the offers that uh, Josh has got for us this evening. Anyway, thank hopefully you, Richard. Now. I'm, uh, yes, I'm back with you, uh, fortunately. Um, and yeah, th thank you for that. It's, um, uh, it's something that we've been working very hard on to make sure that the printers are um, a bit more kind of real world attainable. Um, and there are some absolutely huge benefits to printing uh, even smaller documents and images, so uh, A4s and A3s, on a slightly larger printer because what you're effectively doing is tapping into the great economies of scale that um, you know these big commercial printers and production houses have by having a wide format device. And we'll have a look at the pricing um, a little bit later and see what we can, uh, we can do to, to you know, give you a, a good incentive to have a look at what we've got to offer. Um, coming back to the, uh, the, the print head in the, the Canon machine, or the, the print heads, so there are normally two of them in a graphics product. Um, our nozzle count is around four times higher that than the uh, the nearest equivalent product, and um, that sounds like a wonderful statistic because everybody likes big numbers. I know we certainly do. Um, but the real uh, important bit there is it means that we can get more print out of our printer more quickly, uh, which means less waiting around for you when you're waiting for a print to come out. Um, and it also means that the print head has the ability to manage its nozzles uh, actively to make sure that the print that you get is absolutely the best quality um, as soon as you press print. So no waiting around, no uh, no prints with lines through them, which is not what anybody wants because that wastes your time, it wastes ink, and it wastes paper. So the print head is uh, is a real key component for us, which is which is why we do like to talk about it. Um, 
colour gamut or colour range is something that's also very important to a lot of our customers in the photographic and, uh, and print world because um, uh, the colour space that you will be capturing images in, uh, probably Adobe uh, 98 RGB, um, you're going to want to get as much out of that when you're printing as possible. Um, and as Rich was showing you with the soft proofing, using a, uh, a wide format device with a, a good media stock will allow you to get as close a representation uh, as possible as to the image that you captured. Um, and because we offer uh, 12 color uh, printing, we're extending the color gamut out uh, quite a long way. So it means that we're offering one of the widest color gamuts on the market. So the accuracy is much, much better from screen to print, uh, providing you've, uh, you've done your calibration with the spider. Um, and uh, you'll tend to find that there's very minimal drift as well. So uh, the active print head management will try and control uh, the firing of the nozzles and make sure that when you're printing, um, you don't get any differences over time. Um, there are always good things to do with housekeeping, so doing a, a calibration every so often. And uh, we would always recommend that uh, creating your own ICC profiles based on your actual printer and the media and stock that you have uh, using a, a spider um, is going to give you the most accurate result from screen to print. But having said that, as Richard mentioned, you know there are ICC profiles that will be created by uh, the media suppliers and manufacturers. We certainly supply ICC profiles for uh, Canon medias because uh, we know what those medias look like and how they work. And that will give you a pretty good result out of the box. Uh, the final point to mention on here seems to be uh, the bugbear of a lot of people that want to print their photographic work, and that's monochrome printing. And it's very easy to get uh, a color cast, so a magenta type looking print. Uh, or a cyan type looking print when it should be a true black and white. What you'll find when moving on to a wide format product um, is that because we have uh, a couple of greys and a couple of blacks uh, within the machine, we can produce a true monochrome prints with no colour cast. Um, and it's almost the holy grail of printing, I guess, in certain respects. But wide format uh, professional style products make that really easy for you. Um, so that's something definitely worth thinking about in future. Um, and uh, just another key point there that um, on our machines, if you uh, want to switch from a matte to a glossy paper using a matte black and a glossy black ink, which are in the machine at any one time, there's no wastage or purging that goes on there. So all of the ink pretty much goes on the paper um, rather than going into uh, any kind of waste tank or anything else like that. And um, I think we're, we have a, we're a little bit unique there in being offered, able to offer that to the, uh, to the market. Moving on a little bit into workflow, um, I mentioned earlier that, of course, the, you'll be shooting in Adobe RGB or sRGB most of the time. Um, and Closing the loop on that workflow is quite important when it comes to producing the best accurate color that you can and the most accurate image. So if you shoot in Adobe 1998 RGB, which most of your uh, cameras will, um, you will then process in perhaps Photoshop or uh, Lightroom, as Richard was showing you earlier, using an Adobe 1998 RGB color standard. And Canon printers and wide format printers are the only ones on the market that actually accept this same data standard. So you send Adobe 1998 RGB data to the printer. Rather than having to convert it, as you do with uh, most printers, to a CMYK uh, color standard where um, you're actually uh, kind of stopping down your color range effectively, and then for the printer to then translate it into how it uh, uh, puts different amounts of ink down to create your image, um, you're getting rid of that uh, of that process. So effectively, nothing should be lost in translation and you're going to get the most accurate colors from screen to output or from capture to output. And the reason for that really is because, as you can see, we have both sides of that, uh, of that workflow, the input and the output. Um, and don't worry, you know, you don't have to use a Canon camera for this. We don't mind if you use a, uh, another brand's camera, of course, because everyone has their own preferences. 
um, but they'll all work on this same Adobe 1998 color standard so you're going to know that from capture to print you're going to get a great result. So um, uh, Lightroom uh, Rich showed you a little bit early, earlier on some of the things you could do there. Um, we uh, have compatibility of course with all of these uh, uh, programs and the Adobe suite but what we also add um, typically within our graphics printers is a Photoshop plugin um, and that's designed to make it very, very easy to get the right results out of the printer. Um, and what we don't want is people making mistakes that uh, give them kind of uh, frustration uh, and waste ink and paper because um, the, the better the, the print output we think, uh, the happier you are, the more you're going to use the machine. So I'm just going to see if I can drop out of... of uh, the Pro U uh, Photoshop. So um, I've got a, uh, an image on screen from uh, one of our Canon explorers, a gentleman called Danny Green, who's very, very, uh, well, he's a fantastic wildlife photographer, as you can probably see from the image, but he's also very helpful in letting us use his images uh, for printing demonstrations and the like, so that's why I've got this on screen. And rather than doing what we would normally do and go to the file print, perhaps, with this image, um, I'm actually going to go to the file export and export to the dedicated Canon plugin, the window that we'll then see. So Richard talked earlier a little bit about uh, what you see is what you print or, or what you see is what you get. And um, this is designed to help you with that workflow. So what we can see here is a roll paper preview. So we know that the image is going to print across our 24 inch roll, for instance, in, in this particular example. Um, and very, very simply, um, if I wanted to print the image down the roll and scale to fit, I could do that as well. Um, and then I would know that my image was going to be uh, printed correctly. So again, making sure that we don't have any wastage um, by doing something accidentally or doing it wrong or having to launch a separate preview. I've got a little box here, borderless printing, uh, and it asked me to just double check my roll size. And the Canon machines, uh, every single wide format printer in the Canon range will also print borderlessly at multiple uh, set sizes. So we've all had to trim things before um, to get them into the, the right size frame um, or, or, uh, or something else. And uh, trimming is uh, <laughs> uh, not very uh, uh, good for time and you've got to be very careful with sharp knives and have enough space to, to, uh, to have a big ruler to do it. Um, printing boardlessly means that the printer trims uh, the front and back edge for you um, when it's printing from a roll paper, which can be quite helpful. Um, if I just go back to my main tab here and just run you through a few of the settings, uh, we have our, our media type. Um, so uh, we can select uh, any of our media that are standard medias, but we can also uh, uh, select, we can special medias media configuration tool which comes in the uh, the driver package. So here I'm going to look at a, uh, a satin 240 GSM paper for instance. Um, and we talked a little, about, a little bit about proofing uh, and soft proofing and uh, as Richard was saying on the output side we have a little perform proof in preview box here. So if I actually change a uh, plain paper Or a we're saying result artistic matte canvas. Uh, we should see a little bit of result on screen. Well, I might need to pop that onto auto for a second. And there we go. It's subtle. And again, I don't know how long how it will come across uh, on your screens at home, but you can see the image is is perhaps a bit washed out, media itself um, won't be able to absorb as much ink or, or it won't have the coating to give us the vibrancy. So what I'm going to do is just go to uh, our Satin Photographic 240, which is a, a favourite of ours. And then we have 
quality settings here so we can print using 8-bit or 16-bit images. Now, I can see from the file that this is an 8-bit image, so no point really trying to print an 8-bit image in 16-bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my print mode into high. And then I'm going to go and test uh, my... Uh, uh, photo paper in high mode um, and if we had profiles that were created uh, by a paper manufacturer or profiles that you had created uh, using a spider um, those would be available for you to see there as well just moving on to the, uh, the page setup we talked a little bit about borderless printing just now um, but things we can also do uh, are fit particular page sizes, well, I want to print something within an A3 plus uh, size, I can do that very, very easily. Um, and you can create your own page sizes as well. So if you have particular things you need to print, it is, you can add them and print there. You can also choose where on your roll of paper, if you're using a roll, the image is printed. Um, but, hey, you don't have to use rolls if you don't want to, and sometimes sheets can be more appropriate. Um, so you have a sheet feed here um, as well, uh, and that disables things like borderless printing because it has to, the printer has to hold on to the back of the sheet for you to be able to do that. And again, we have our, our print preview that shows us what it's going to look like. Finally, we have a few color settings um, that we can adjust here. Now, in theory, if you've got everything right from uh, calibration of your screen, uh, you've got your ICC profile for your paper, and your printer has had its uh, Canon base calibration done, which happens when it comes out of the box, you shouldn't really need to worry about adjusting these kind of sliders. But, uh, uh, as Richard mentioned earlier, um, not everything is, you know, best case, and in the real world, sometimes you need to make some tweaks, and you can do here. Um, so we have uh, the standard, so I am magenta yellow, whether your grey is, uh, or, your, or your black is cool or warm, and then brightness, contrast, and saturation. We also have a nice little feature here called the adjustment pattern setting. Um, and uh, it may take a little bit of time to load on my laptop while I put some more coal in. Um, but this is designed to almost be colour management 101. So if you don't have all the equipment or you're getting started, um, out uh, a, uh, a page of swatches, so almost like some thumbnails. And the thumbnails um, give you a adjustment spacing. So you can adjust in your X and Y axes different types of uh, printing parameters. I've got contrast and brightness here. Um, and within that, um, I've got seven patterns being shown uh, uh, across the page and down the page. And my adjustment spacing is uh, plus or minus five. So I can print out this contact page and I can look at these and, and uh, say, well, actually, uh, this is the type of output I want. So I could say that I would want it, um, you know, uh, plus 9, minus 13, for instance. Um, and I could just go back into uh, the plugin. And I adjust my brightness, if I wanted to, to plus 9, and my contrast to 13, for instance. And the plugin would always remember those. Um, features uh, and those settings until you change them again. So everything you print would be based on uh, that initial kind of very basic kind of color management 101. Um, so that's very, very helpful. Other than that, we can append print information. So we can put a label on the print um, that says uh, the print history, the file name, uh, the printer name, the printer that actually uh, produced the print, um, and any uh, custom comments. And in the support bit, we have access to our user manual. So very much trying to get rid of the mystery of printing and make sure that uh, when you press print and, uh, and your printer fires into life, um, that you're getting a great result, which means you're not wasting time, wasting ink, or wasting money. I think the biggest frustration that puts photographers off printing is not getting the right result, but taking some, you know, some basic steps um, and, and using a color managed screen, using an ICC profile, uh, and using something like either 
Lightroom or using the Photoshop plugin with the Canon printer will make it easy for you to get the right result uh, first time every time. So that's something that uh, that we really like to talk about is it's a, a free piece of software that comes uh, with every Canon wide format machine uh, from the uh, IPF 5100, our 17-inch uh, machine, all the way up to our 60-inch machine. And uh, we often find with things that are free and in the box that people forget about them because they're on the disk um, and uh, and struggle along with other other printing uh, mediums or, or even just file print. Um, so definitely, uh, if you're considering investing in a wide format machine, uh, the Photoshop plugin uh, should be something that you, uh, you perhaps have a think about in terms of how you're going to print and how easy it can uh, make life for you. Certainly, uh, it makes life very easy for me, so I'm a big fan of it. Okay, so just dropping back uh, into the tab out here, which is... Uh, Excellent, and that's the gallery wrapping tool or the canvas wrapping tool. Again, this comes within the Photoshop platform and then automate. And what this runs effectively is a droplet in the background uh, within Photoshop, so or a macro if uh, if you're more familiar with that term. And uh, what it's doing at the moment is it's creating a canvas print for me at my canvas image size. Uh, so it's saying 17.28 inches in width, 11.5 uh, in height. Now we can uh, select any canvas size we like, or we can add our own ones, and we can change the thickness of our stretch bars or our background, uh, or our wraparound, sorry. We add a little bit of extension onto the back, uh, which means that our canvas print goes around the frame, um, and then we can select different types of uh, um, uh, kind of the side of the image, the bit that you wouldn't normally see. Uh, and things like a soft reflection are normally a nice way of producing a, a good canvas print uh, to go on the wall. Uh, you even have crop marks on here, so it helps you with stretching the canvas. Um, and when we press execute, uh, it will go and do, I'll just bring it up again. Um, what you, you may be able to see, uh, the droplet running in the, the bottom right-hand corner. Um, and it's doing all the hard work um, and taking uh, the strain away from us of having to set up sizes or do anything else. And if I uh, just make some adjustments, so I put my paper back to roll paper. And uh, I take off enlarge reduce. We don't want to do any scaling here. Um, then we can see in my role preview, that if my page size to seven for the size of print we're doing, we can see our soft reflection here, we can see our crop marks here as well, and all we need to do then really is, is just print that image in, onto a canvas, and we've got something that's ready to go onto some stretch bars, ready to be sold as a product um, to, with a you know, hopefully a good ticket value to it, or ready to, to give someone as a gift, especially as uh, Christmas is absolutely on the way. So um, a really easy, easy way of creating canvas prints, uh, which typically takes people a lot of time otherwise. you about the uh, the hero product so the IPF 5100 that we've mentioned uh, a couple of times so far this is our 17 inch a2 plus uh, printer it's kind of our entry into wide format but a professional uh, style product and this has the benefit of being uh, able to feed uh, sheets of paper from the top of the machine so you have a nice uh, flat paper path um, so you can put heavyweight stock into there um, you also have a cassette, which will take up to um, A2 sheets, um, much lower grammage, normally about 140 GSM, I think, off the top of my head, uh, because it has to actually uh, push those and wind that through the printer, uh, as your desktop printer might do if it was printing from a cassette. And then, crucially, um, and this is re really the kicker for these machines, a roll feed. Roll paper, typically, we find is about 20% cheaper um, per square meter than cut sheet. So it can save you a lot of money 
uh, by printing using rolls of paper rather than sheets. There's another huge benefit that you can print panoramics um, and you can print oversized images uh, at any size you want because the printer has a little cutter blade uh, which will trim uh, the back of the image dependent on uh, how long that image is. Uh, there's also a huge variety of media of roll, um, almost more than sheet, I would think. Um, so the variety of things that you can produce is, is absolutely uh, enormous. Um, the ink system, as we mentioned earlier, is a 12 ink system. So the uh, largest number of ink tanks. Um, often people think that the more ink tanks you have, the more expensive the printer is to run. The reality of the situation is it's the complete opposite. The more inks you have, the less mixing of ink your printer does to create the same color. Um, so if we had a 20 ink printer, that would be even cheaper to run than the 12 ink system. So don't be scared of the, uh, the large amount of ink tanks. You would only ever need to typically replace one at one time, and they last a very long time. The inks are UV stable and light fast for over 95 years uh, in, uh, in standard storage conditions, and they're 130 milliliter when you buy the, uh, the ink tanks themselves. So if you compare that to the printer sitting on your desk at home or in your office, which may have three or four milliliters in the cartridge, the cost per milliliter is much, much, much lower. Um, and that's, uh, that's very beneficial when it comes to printing, even if you wanted to use it to print office documents. We've got two of these great Canon print heads that we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, which have that warranty. And we have features like borderless printing as well to save you time trimming and make sure that, uh, that there are no injuries with craft knives. Um, in terms of what the printer can do, uh, you can get an A2 photographic print in a little over two minutes. So this is a professional standard product, but as you'll see in a minute, perhaps not at the, the price you might expect. Um, and the typical print length is 18 meters. So if anybody uh, on the call has got uh, a wall big enough to uh, put an 18 meter print on, um, good for you. I would like to have, but uh, maybe one day. Um, and then as I mentioned earlier, no black ink switching. So when you want to change between a matte type of media and a glossy type media, unlike other printers on the market, you don't have any wastage with the Canon to do that. It will automatically switch. Uh, there's nothing mechanical that goes on. It just prints using that particular channel and that particular ink. So uh, on to the special offer that we actually have for you this evening. Um, the 5100, the full recommended retail price that we as a manufacturer set is about three and a half thousand um, pounds, uh, which is you know still quite a lot of printer for the money. Um, but you know, we realize that uh, uh, if we want to really get you guys enthusiastic about printing, um, then we need to find a way to make it a little bit more attainable. So our current recommended retail promotional price is uh, a, a just a little over 1,600 pounds. Um, but uh, um, on the next slide, um, we'll tell you about a few tricks that might be able to make that even more in attractive for you. Um, very important, ink in the box. So you get over a thousand milliliters of ink in this uh, box when you buy the printer. Uh, the printer comes with 90 mil ink cartridges, which are starters. And we're very open about the fact that they're 90 milliliters. I think it says 90 mil on there, so there's no guesswork involved. Um, but uh, that value uh, is about almost 600 pounds RRP. So there's a lot of ink that comes with the printer. And typically to do an A2 photographic print, you're usually unlikely to use more than a few mil of ink. So if you've got a thousand mil to start with, um, that's a hell of a lot of ink to be working with there. And that should get you a lot of prints out of your machine. Um, even better than that, we've even uh, got an offer on with uh, some printing software that helps you with things like nesting. So if you want to uh, combine lots of images together and print them on the roll, um, and then trim them down afterwards, uh, which is, uh, again, much more cost effective than printing 4x6s on a desktop printer, a uh, typical uh, A4 machine, of course. Um, then there's some free printing software, which has an RRP of around £745. Um, and that's on at the moment while stocks last. Um, these, uh, these offers are available uh, via our Canon accredited reseller partners. Um, some of which you uh, you may know and deal with already, some of which you, you don't. Um, and uh, having done a little bit of research uh, uh, this evening, um, uh, a sneaky uh, shortcut with this is that um, we found that actually some of the, uh, the offers out there are absolutely fantastic and uh, 
designed to be pretty compelling before Christmas. Um, so I've seen uh, the 5100 advertised for um, under £900, including the VAT, um, which, uh, which is staggering, uh, considering you're getting almost £600 of ink. Uh, it's virtually a free printer. So uh, do a bit of research and, uh, and see what you can find out there. Um, that's, uh, that's everything from me, Rich. So um, if you cool. want to right. uh, take, take that control. <laughs> If you're right, still there, you, Josh, thanks, thanks a lot. I, I have to say, I mean, crikey, that's uh, that's one hell of a deal, really. Isn't it? I mean, I hadn't picked up on the ink and the software in there as well in 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 the bundle. So essentially, around around 900 ish pounds for the sound of it out there on the by marketplace. The, by the looks of it, yes. I mean, there's some, some pretty good offers out there, um, and uh, and I think uh, yeah, including the value around 900 quid. Um, I think yeah, delivery might be a little a little bit, but um, uh, you know, 20 or 30 pounds probably, but um. Uh, but you're yes. getting, uh, getting a lot of 600 quid's worth of ink and 700 mm. quid's worth of stuff. It, it's, you're, yeah. you're paying them to take it, really, aren't you? What a, what a well, fine thing you are. Uh, <laughs> we're very nice at Canon, you see. Pardon? I said we're very nice at Canon. You are indeed, yeah. We're very, <laughs> very lovely people. No, cool. Well, thanks, Josh. That, that's great, mate. Um, we're you. obviously, I've got a few rounding up bits as far as workflow is concerned. I, I, we, we're going to be hard pressed to cram it all in for eight o'clock, uh, given that it's now eight o'clock. So I'm going to quickly run through the bits that you also need as far as your workflow is concerned, because you've seen tonight, hopefully, you know, Josh has done a great job of, of really encapsulating how to get the best out of your print and how to make it as easy as possible to print out. Now, the other thing you're going to need, whether you're you know, wherever you're soft proofing, and we, we've given you two places to soft proof, and, and to be perfectly honest, the more the better, because we want you to be able to check it in your the start of your workflow, but most importantly, at that back end of the workflow, when you're going to print, make sure you're emulating that end result and checking it's how you want it to look. So, the only point in doing that is if you're looking at that soft proof, wherever it is, on a screen that is calibrated. Now that screen could be lots of different things nowadays. It could be laptop screens, it could be projectors even, or TV screens. Fortunately, the Spider, which is our, uh, our you know, market leading tool for color calibration there, uh, gives you that opportunity to do it. Essentially, it comes with Mac or PC software, and you just essentially plug it into your computer that's driving the screen and run the software. It runs software swatches in front of the eye of the device, and it then, at the end of the process, when you hit save, calibrates that screen on that computer. So instantly, that puts your screens into this international color standard, the same standard that all these profiles produced either by the spider print or even within some of the printers, the top, top end of um, Josh's range of printer actually has a, a built-in calibration device in there, built-in um, profiling device in there. But um, but however those profiles are, are created, they're all in this international standard. So you need to view them at, when they're soft-proofed in a device that's allowing you to see that international uh, color standard. That's what we calibrate to with the spider. That's what you end up with as far as that calibration is concerned. Very simple to do it, basically. Uh, now compatible with all the latest types of screens as well because we've upgraded, or the data has upgraded the spider this year to the spider version 5, happened in the summer, and effectively now it's really aimed at that, that um, that, that area where you, you now want to go out and work on the move as well, on laptops, out in the field. You know, if you're doing things like weddings or wildlife or landscape photography, great to be able to retouch on the fly, on the go. And therefore, that's where we've made the Spider 5 a much more mobile device. It's got a built-in lens cap. The optics in there are encapsulated, basically. It's, it's a much more robust device. In fact, nothing else beforehand has been designed like this really to give it that, that capability of being pulled in and out of a bag, plugged in and quickly rerunning a calibration to check your calibration. Because of course every time you go somewhere new to a different lighting environment, you need to recalibrate you will see things differently. If you think about looking at an image on a computer in the morning in a room with no curtains closed, you're going to see it very washed out and you're going to want to increase saturation. At the end of the day, with the curtains drawn and very limited lighting, it's going to seem oversaturated, even if you've not actually done anything. 
that's why you need to stabilize your lighting environment, that's why you need to calibrate. Of course, another thing we've done with the, the Spider 5 is encapsulate those optics to make it even more robust. And if you can see here, we've got a, a little grid on the actual optics array itself. And that grid focuses light, it's, a, it's essentially a bunch of tubes, you can just see it sort of in, in landscape, or it's a, in, in cutaway mode there, which focus, focuses the light onto the sensor, cutting down on, on light coming in from the sides, which is really important in sort of, you know, uh, bad lighting conditions uh, or, or for instance if you're working on lower quality displays as well. Key thing though, you can, do, you can calibrate pretty much anything. 4K screens, 5K screens, curved screens, all of these things are now catered for by the Spider 5. So really ubiquitous device for making sure you are looking at your your colors, your retouching, your soft proofing in the right environment. Just to explain, there's three of them, Express, Pro and Elite. Express is entry level, usually comes in somewhere around, in the UK, somewhere around 110 pounds uh, ink vat, but there's plenty of deals out. In fact, some of the, the, the guys that um, Josh was mentioning earlier on all stock uh, the, 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 the spider range here. So have a look for some cracking deals on uh, Christmas deals basically on the Express. The Pro is the more advanced version. In fact, the Express, the Pro and the Elite are all physically the same device. They're just software enabled to give you more capabilities as you go up the range, the Elite being the top of the range. Pro is what most photographers will go for, pro photographers, because the key thing it's got to enable there is the ambient light sensor. So again, if you are on the move, if you are working in different locations or just moving around in, in a lab or in a studio, then basically the ambient light sensor is helping you to get calibrated even if the lighting conditions are changing during the day. The Elite, top of the range, aimed at studios, a whole bunch of different uh, advantages in there, but most importantly, you can force multiple displays to match exactly, and it will also do multi-point sampling, i.e. checking across the display for any hot spots. But that's the, the Spider. We're not going to get a chance to talk about the, the front end tonight. There's a whole host of different devices out there we've got for calibration. I'm going to be doing a, a webinar tomorrow with the Photographer Academy if anybody is a member or wants to join. In fact, I'm going to give you a, a discount code for that uh, very shortly. Um, but basically, uh, that's uh, that's a, a partner of ours that, that run a whole bunch of training videos on different types of devices out there. I'll give you information about that. If at some point you decide you need to solve something at the front end, if you want to be solving that capability of making sure at stage one there you are capturing correctly, because at the moment we've talked about the back end, how to make sure you can get on print what's happening and what you want to, what you see on screen and what you want to go out. But that doesn't necessarily mean what you're seeing on screen is what you captured. We can actually address that with a whole range of different devices things like the spider checker, which is a color chart, which also is useful in conjunction with what Josh was talking about on the 3D printing side of things. It's the only device color chart out there that works hand in hand with Photoshop to, uh, to actually calibrate scanning in a 3D environment so that you can actually get your output correct in 3D printing as well, if anybody's thinking about that. Key thing uh, we've got in our, our lineup, in order to just tell you where, okay, just simple things like, have I got a color cast in my images? You know, what's going on in a capture? I have no idea. Throw something in there that is a frame of reference. Most people use a gray card. We'd suggest using a spider cube. This is a device that's actually three-dimensional. It is a cube. It is solid. It is a, about a, a four centimeters to a side. But it has a big advantage in as much as you can either hang it, tripod mount it. It's not going to blow away like cards are when you're using a grey card. It's not going to get creased up like cards do when you're using a grey card. You don't actually need anybody to hold it because you can hang it or you can post it in there. And also where a grey card has to be angled at 45 degrees to the light to get the correct value of grey, when you're setting grey values, when you're setting exposure and shadow, with the spider cube, just by the nature of it being cubic, one of the two sides there, you're seeing two sides that are actually, in, in reality, exactly the same color of gray and white. Well, basically, they one of them is going to look lighter depending on whether you've got stronger light source coming in. And that, of course, the lighter side is going to be somewhere, you can angle it so it's somewhere around 45 degrees very, very simply. It's a very quick way rather than having to try and move gray cards around. So if you want to find out more about the cubes, come to the, the session tomorrow. 
all of what we've been talking about tonight, the spider print as far as calibration of print is concerned, the spider elite, the top of the range screen calibrator, and the spider cube are available in the spider studio. Now again, checking out some of the prices out there tonight from some of the resellers that uh, that uh, Josh was mentioning, I, we, we've actually got the, the bundle of, uh, of the Christmas discounts somewhere under £350. So have a look around and see what uh, what you can get for the bundle out there. Uh, just considering the spider print on its own, because it's a complex device for, for working, for calibrating print end. That's normally £299, so you're getting what, £220 worth of Spider 5 Elite, plus £50 worth of Spider Cube into just over the cost of the spider print. So great Christmas pricing there. Other great things, if you happen to um, go for a data color product uh, at the moment, then there is a discount being uh, offered out there. If you go to the URL there in blue, www.datacolor.com forward slash Adobe 2015. Dash UK, you can get up to 20% off the uh, Creative Cloud, the Adobe Creative Cloud Photography Plan. So that includes both Photoshop that Josh was showing you very quickly and uh, Lightroom that I was showing you quickly, plus a whole bunch of other stuff like the mobile apps and the uh, Lightroom Cloud there. Excellent uh, tool for, excellent set of tools for all your image editing needs basically and soft proofing needs as well so therefore it works superbly and of course you've got that plug-in that comes with the, the the Canon printers there that you can plug straight into Photoshop to make that that soft proofing at the back end even more easy to do getting your 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 um, images ready to go and ready to rock um, Lastly, if you want to find more about what we're talking about tonight, we've got a whole bunch of videos. If you go to YouTube and search for Next Tech, there's a whole bunch of different tutorial videos up there. Uh, basic, uh, basic level stuff. Or if you, as as mentioned, wanted to sign up for the Photographer Academy, a good partner of ours. Now they do a whole range of different videos. Uh, they they do charge for their video um, membership every year, but uh, as you can see, even at the basic level, there's there's over 1,100 different types of films you get for. You know the forty-nine pound twelve-month uh, subscription there. Um, then and also not only that, the two pro levels there with the the bigger numbers of films, you can get a discount. Those discount codes data sixty or data twenty, giving you discounts off the 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 business and the pro levels there. So hopefully there's a few um, happy Christmas presents, stocking fillers from us. Here's another one. If you wanted to find out more about all we've been talking about tonight. Go and download our free ebook. Just go to the URL listed there, and you can download 93 glorious pages. Some of it, uh, as you can see, could be in German. Uh, with there is an English version, there is a French version. Uh, so go and uh, download that. You just need to pop in your details, and uh, you get to download 93 pages of gripping. Uh, color management stuff. You really don't know who did it until the end. Um, but that's it. We're going to open up the questions and answers section in a minute. If we don't get a chance to answer all of your questions because we're already running over, then basically there is a free phone support line. The European free phone support line there is 00 800 700 870. So that is a free phone support line for Europe. Or there is also the ticketing service there to, to go online and uh, pop in your tickets via our website such that you can uh, submit a ticket if you've got any questions that we can't answer tonight. I think that's it. Oh, lastly, we've got lots of other webinars coming up. As mentioned, I'm doing one tomorrow with the Photographer Academy, so I think that may even be a free one if you log on to uh, the, the Photographer Academy uh, website. And they'll be covering off the capture end of things there. So with that, folks, I'm going to say thank you very much. I'm also going to say a happy festive season and uh, happy holidays to those of you who will be celebrating